if every child had their own teacher. This was posed to me in the context of computers in the classroom. What if every child had their own teacher? And could computers get us closer to the positive aspects of that reality? I will warn you, in the next few minutes, I planned on toying with your emotions a little bit. I want to get you really excited about the potential for blended learning. And then I'm going to bum you out a little bit and tell you about some of the limitations of our current educational system and why this is not flooding our classrooms currently. But I hope you leave here with a cautious optimism for what this might hold. To start, I am curious as to what you think when I say blended learning. Some of you may need a hint that it has to do with computers and classrooms and education. That's okay. Others of you might be thinking of a student working at a computer and you're thinking, Carmen San Diego. Or maybe, like me, more Oregon Trail. And that's because this is what we had when we were in schools learning from computers. And then there are some of you that are thinking of all the potential possibilities. There's the kid who's, you know, answering a quiz question on his iPhone. He's, you know, programming on his iPad. He's, you know, doing a presentation on PowerPoint on his uh, laptop, probably simultaneously. But no matter where you start today, I bet at one point or another you've thought, this technology thing, this could be big. <laughs> you know, kids these days with their YouTube and their Facebook, you know, uh, we should be able to use their technology prowess in order to enhance their education. So I will define it a little bit. Very broadly, blended learning is where students are learning from computers for about 25% or more of their day. This is different than online courses. There was a, a school in Fresno, California that offered cre credits to their students if they wanted to uh, take an online course. But only 23% of their students actually passed those courses. Then they said, well, what if we did an after-school you know, lab where we had a teacher available for those online courses. And then 43% of the, the students were able to make up these courses. And this was for courses they needed to make up to receive graduation credit for. And so they said, well, let's take it a step further. For summer school, what if they came for a full day and had a teacher available to them to help them through these courses? And then 95% of the students were able to complete their course credit. So this face-to-face -face time is very important to blended learning. In 2011, um, I worked for Alpha, and we were, we were on the founding team of this school. And we were interested in this blended learning model. So we decided, like, what's out there? What are people doing? So we first looked at the rotational model. And this is where, in one given classroom, you have some students working in a small group with a teacher. You have some students who are working with each other in a collaborative group. And you have some students working on the computer. And then they rotate through those stations throughout the day. Another more familiar setting might be the laboratory model, where at some point in a student's day, they're going into a lab setting and learning from computers. Uh, Rocket Ship Charter School in San Jose, California, actually went from this model, and they changed to an open classroom model. This is where you have, you know, you could have 60 students in a classroom with three teachers, and then they use the space as flexible space designed to enhance student learning. Another model that's gotten a lot of notoriety is the flipped classroom model, where students are expected to come to class having already watched videos, having already done some readings, and then they do the homework in the classroom. At Alpha, we decided to use a split model, where at any given point, we, some students would be on the computers and some students would be with the teacher. And what's really exciting about blended learning is that there's no one way to do it. Because it's so new, there's no best practice. No one knows how to do it best. So across the country, there are just different schools doing different things. It's also a good chance to talk about what blended learning is not. Um, what you'll often hear is that we need uh, computers in schools because kids need 21st century skills. And this is where I want to point out the difference between using technology and teaching technology. Like, kids do need 21st century skills. You know, employers want students who have PowerPoint experience, like work with Excel, you know, who know how to code an app who know how to manage a website. These are very important skills, but that's not necessarily what blended learning is. Blended learning is about using the computers as a tool, from learning from the computers, not necessarily learning about computers. So that was an important distinction to make. I want to walk you through some of the programs that are available, just so you get a, an idea. It's not just Oregon Trail. What are kids doing when they're on these computers? One program is called Accelerated Reader. And to begin, a student would take a quiz, and it assigns them a reading level. And then any book that's in the library, they can choose, and they can find out that book's reading level and take an online quiz about it. And the, the computer program tracks how many words they've read, what reading levels of books they've read, what their vocabulary usage. 
Another program called ST Math targets math comprehension skills, and it does everything from elementary math all the way through algebraic properties, and it does it all without words. So very focused on um, making everything a game and focusing on conceptual learning. And these are two programs that you would pay for. You would pay for them either per student, per license, or per school. But there are also plenty of programs that have no cost. Khan Academy has you know, received much acclaim for its free online videos, namely targeting math instruction. Code Academy offers free instruction in programming, whether it's Java, HTML, PHP, and others. And that's, for, you know, that's, that's exciting to see just this small snippet of programs that are available. My guess is that within three years, you will have 10 times as many available to schools to choose from. Everything from dissections to public speaking, these will all be in a kid-friendly format. This is really exciting because it could help students learn and help teachers be more effective and efficient. When students are on computers, they are able to go at their own pace. They're able to get immediate feedback when they get a question wrong. They can access their lessons from home, and then they can go and submit all of their assignments digitally. And so this is a, an, an excellent tool to help students become independent learners and to have uh, teachers be able to, to focus less on remediation. So I'd ask, how is this all financially possible to have all of these computers and programs in schools? And it might surprise you to find out that these programs actually have a smaller price tag than some of our traditional educational systems. And this is done usually one of two ways. Either uh, schools will say there should be more students in a classroom with the understanding that some of them will be on the computers and some of them will be working with the teacher. Or they can do it in an alternate way, more of a laboratory style model, but they don't put a teacher in the classroom, they'll put coaches, or they'll put tutors, or they'll put parents. And I warn people who are looking for a financial fix when they're thinking about blended learning, you will probably fail. Blended learning is definitely a work of heart, and certain pieces have to be in place for it to be effective. I'll give you an example. In 2009, I was working at a school that was just thinking about maybe doing this program. And so they decided, all right, so this, this new teacher, we're going to put him in a lab class for an hour a day with their, the kids doing a math program. And you know, the ex expectation was at the time, oh, kids love computers. If they can spend three hours a day on Facebook, one hour doing math should be easy. And of course, that's not what happened. You know, kids were YouTubing gang fight and ripping off the keys to spell out YOLO. Like, this is what kids were doing with that time. The, and this was a, um, thrown out after a year, an ineffective practice. And so, you know, we really have to think about how we are going to, to make this program effective. The computer is just a tool. The same way we wouldn't hand a student a textbook and say, great, educate yourself. We can't expect to hand them a computer and say the same thing. At Alpha, we actually have this as part of a model. And so it can only be one piece of a model meant to improve education. It's just one piece of a very complex model. And teaching and learning will change. And so in order to use this tool, we have to change. And this can be really scary. When a, when a school asks me, what, what would we need to do to be able to go blending? Or we're thinking about going blended. What would we need? And I, I usually say one of four questions, or all four questions. One, are you flexible? Do you have the flexibility to midway through the year completely change what you're doing because it's not working? Are you flexible enough to let teachers be innovators and have them do different things than each other or than you planned and let them experiment to find these ba uh, best practices? Two, are you committed? You, know, you can't go halfway. You can't say, yeah, kids are going to learn on computers every day, but not be prepared to fix them immediately or not have the bandwidth needed to have all the kids on the computer at the same time. In order to be fully committed to this model, you also need to train teachers to be proficient at using these programs and to commit to using the data in order to make the students' work valid and visible. The next question I have is about mindset. If you sit a student at a computer, you know, how are you going to know that they want to engage with that program? You know, a this program is only as valuable as the student thinks it is. And so I'm going to paraphrase Carol Dweck. She said, what do we do if a student does a math problem and they do it perfectly and they do it quickly? Do we praise them? 
And she would have said no. What we say is, I'm sorry I wasted your time. That was obviously too easy. Let me find something that you can learn from. And that's the type of mindset that we need to be encouraging with our students. When they sit down at that computer, do they believe that the work they are doing will make a difference, will be valued? The last question I ask is about the role of the teacher. Some would say in this model that teachers matter less since computers are taking over some of the instruction. But I actually think teachers matter more in this, uh, in this model. You know, they are now the orchestrators of these complex learning paths, picking which program should go for which student. They have to now target all the skills that the computer can't do, how to motivate that child, how to connect what they're doing to their home life, how to create a hands-on project that complements what they're doing online. You know, all of these um, will mean that the teacher needs to be a critical thinker and an innovator, and we'll need to treat them as such. And so, you are learning a lot of lessons today. And so I hope that you are able to retain that you can't be distracted. When people are telling you that we need to have computers in classrooms because they're cost efficient, because we need 21st century skills, they're right, those things are true, but that's not why we engage in blended learning. And second, I hope that I've prompted you to get excited about blended learning and the po potential that computers can have in classrooms. And lastly, I hope that you feel that you want to get involved. We need educators as well as software developers, website developers. There is so much need in the area of blended learning. Join, be a part of the solution. Um, we need so many people to start really developing some of these programs. Um, there are schools out there that still have phone trees because we don't know how to make it better. So help us. I also hope that we can uh, reflect on the first question. You know, if we have one teacher to, you know, to one student, what, that, what is that potential? And if computers can help us get there to where we're really focused on individualizing education and optimizing their, their pace of learning, you know, why aren't we there? And what can we all collectively do to make sure that that is a reality in the near future? Thank you.